every day an opportunity to be more fully alive, more fully awake, and more fully tuned in so that you and I can celebrate the life that we are. And in doing that this week, we're going to be looking at uh, these two things that can occupy us sometimes, work and success. And we usually equate the two. We hope that indeed uh, our work will be successful. And uh, it does, as I say, enter our consciousness from time to time, and we think about it. Well, I'm asking us to look at it in, a, in an entirely different way this week as we move through the days before us. This is one thing I have come to understand and realize, that my job is definitely not my work. And my work is not necessarily connected with my job. There is a big difference. And so we have to understand the difference between a job and, a, and work. I mean, jobs come, jobs go. My work remains a constant forever. I can change my job, but I don't ever get to change my work because my work is a constant forever. And I have to have that clear in my mind, that understanding. And when we think about it, we hear people talking about work as though they're talking about a job. They're talking about, oh, I've got to get to work now, or I want to get some work now, or I have to go away to get some work now. And really what we're talking about our jobs and not our work. So today we're going to take a deeper look at what work is so that we can understand it more fully and be on purpose in our lives. Because indeed, our life is our work and our work is our life. And we do not work to earn a living. We are living our work. We do not work to earn a living. We are living our work, or are we? And that's the question. So when it comes to that realization and that understanding, uh, the idea of work and job are so interlinked with each other that there, there is a confusion. And it's important for us not to be confused about it anymore because we want to stop identifying ourselves with our jobs. People are inclined to identify themselves with their jobs. Um, how they feel has to do with their job, what they think about themselves has to do with their job, and so on. And that has to stop, because I am so not my job, and it's not my identity. I don't care how good a job it is. It's not my identity. And so, how, how comfortable are you with the question, what do you do? As soon as you ask people what they do, they'll tell you, oh, I'm out of work at the moment, or I have this job at the moment, or, uh, and so on. And in the past, especially, and even to this present day, as I was saying this morning, when some women are asked, you know, well, what do you do? They kind of pause for a moment, they kind of look down and say, oh, I'm only a housewife. As though they're apologizing for the fact. And see, I think to choose to be able to be a housewife like that is the most wonderful, fabulous, great thing you could choose to be because there you are, you're taking charge of the household, you're, you're ensuring that this house, this abode, this home is the best it could possibly be and it's the most beautiful place to raise children and you're there alongside of the raising of your children and what better work or job could you have? Now that's a work. It's not a job. It's a way of life. And how splendid that is, and yet I've seen it, and I've seen the physical changes in people as they say, oh, I'm just a housewife, and write themselves off as just a something. And so that's why we have to understand the difference between a job and the difference between our work. Jobs, as I say, they come and they go. So. What is it that you are identifying with, or what is it that identifies you? Is it your job? Is it the place of work that you go to? Um, when you go to your job, are you going to your job um, just so that you can um, have bread and clothes and, and a house? Are you going to your job for its compensation? no matter how great the compensation is, with the great benefits, the great perks, the great vacation time, and so on. If that's the only reason why we're going to our jobs, we're selling ourselves short and we're not, we're not, we're not earning enough. Eric Butterworth says, if that's the only reason why we go to our jobs, we go to our work, 
to get the compensation from it, then he says we are out of sync with our spiritual nature and we have lost contact with our essential selves because that's not why the unfolding soul, the um, consciously growing awareness in the individual uh, thinks. That's not how the, that individual thinks or perceives or sees their job or whatever. The job is just the job and if we are participating in our essential work, then the job would be supporting that, supporting that. Okay then, what is our essential work? Gee, I thought you'd never get there. <laughs> what is that essential work that is yours and that is mine? It's one thing and it's one thing alone. It's our whole purpose for being. It's our reason for being here. Our work is to self-actualize, to God-realize. That's our work. It always was, is, and it always will be. That's the one work all of us have. It's common to us all. And sometimes our jobs will support that, and sometimes our jobs will not, depending upon who shows up at the job. And this week, you and I get to ask ourselves that question, who shows up in my job? as I go out every day to my job. Is it my essential self that shows up, my true self? Is it my shadow self, the imposter self, the cover-up self? Is it my ego self, the frightened, scared self, the agitated self? Who shows up when I turn up to do my job every day? Who is it that's showing up? That's the question we get to ask ourselves this week. Maybe in one day, several cells of ourselves will show up on the job. But the question is, which one of those three show up the most, at least 51% of the time? The true self, the shadow self, the disguised self, or the ego self, the frightened, scared self? Hmm, it's an interesting question. So this is the task at hand, to ask myself truly, am I one with my work? Am I in sync with my work? Am I flowing with the tide of my true work? Because if I am, I'm being very, very challenged indeed. Because the norm is to go with the flow of the material world, and for me to be in sync with my essential self and go with the flow of spirit, I have to, what appears to be, swim against the norm, swim against the tide of the norm, which can be quite sometimes dangerous because there's a lot of uh, debris floating around the top of all of that, and I can bump into it. So I have to be really awake, alert, and committed to my work if I'm going to move through the marketplace in sync with the source of my being and on purpose, in purpose, with the source of my being and in the understanding and the awareness of amazing grace that takes me through it all safe and sound. That's what I'm called to do. So what is it that you do? The answer would be, oh, what I do is simply be. Crazy kind of answer for many people who would be listening to you in the marketplace. They say, oh, what's wrong with her? I think she's lost it. What would it be if the whole world just simply thought they could just be? I mean, where would that leave us? Gosh, where would it leave us? Where would it take us if we all decided one day to simply be? Be on purpose with the desire of the soul to release its hidden splendor. Where would that take us and where would we be? So, what do I do? What do I do? It's a rhetorical question. What do you do? I kind of know myself a bit of that answer. And I'm hoping you have a bit of the answer going for you too, so that you can be excited and celebratory about every day of your life as you wake up. What we are asked not to do is to get caught up in the material world, which is a very seductive and addictive world. Not to get 
caught up in materialism because we are so not material form. We are so more than that. And yet, some of us who are driven to success think that we're supposed to get to the top of the heap, the top of the ladder, any old which way we can. And some of us don't mind selling our birthright, which is the opportunity for enlightenment, for a bowl of porridge, for heaven's sakes. Now, we know that that never works out, giving up your birthright for a bowl of porridge, for heaven's sakes. And as I said this morning as a child, I never got that. I thought, well, why would anybody give anything away for a bowl of horrible porridge? Because I didn't like porridge. Gosh, at least a bar of chocolate. Bowl of ice cream, maybe, but porridge? Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> to do that is to live a life of regret. That will guarantee us living a life of regret. At the end of our days, when we're finished with this form on this plane, how do we want the world to perceive us? Well, really, we won't even be bothered about how the world receives us as those who are on a spiritual path unfolding. But say we did care. What would it be that we would like the world to um, have as a perception or a picture of us? And I love the, the little um, gravestone in one of uh, the old um, graveyards that read, um, Here lies the body of Andrew Murray who for 40 years cobbled shoes to the glory of God. That man had made his job his work. He was living out his work by cobbling shoes, putting soles on shoes, and in so doing, absolutely glorifying his own soul and the soul of all those whom he served which is to give God the glory in and through and by means of how we show up in our lives on purpose in our work and unfolding our work. There was a, a Harvard professor, a very distinguished man, uh, and a very well-loved Harvard, Harvard uh, professor, and he said once, you know, I, it's just it's like a dream. I get up every day and I go to a work that um, I would gladly do without any compensation if I could afford it. And that man got the whole thing. Um, he understood that his work was his passion, and his passion was his work. And his work and passion was to give, was to pour himself out, was to make a contribution, was to make a difference, was to bring light and transformation into lives. And he was doing it. And he was doing it gladly, and he was doing it joyously, and he was doing it eagerly, and he couldn't get enough of it. And it just was the, just the joy in his life to be in that work. And wouldn't it be lovely if all of us could say the same thing about the work that we are engaged in as far as jobs are concerned? And I realized um, not that long ago, really, I kind of, I suppose, just taken it for granted until then and just thought, well, that's the way it's supposed to be, that I loved every single job that I was ever engaged in. I loved my work. I loved to show up for my work. I loved my work. And that got better and better and better and better as my life went on. And like that professor, I too could say, I would gladly show up and do the work I'm in without compensation if I could afford it. However, the if I could afford, I have a way of working with because I know the teaching. And I'm sure I can say that uh, without that, uh, uh, that little added on, when I get to the point where I can, can give 90% of my compensation away because the 10% will be more than enough left over for me to live on. That's what I'm looking forward to because the compensation is not in the form of money or benefits or perks. The compensation is the joy of knowing you're living on purpose. You're living your purpose. And your work is your living, and your living is your work, you see. That's the joy of it all. And that's what we want for ourselves. I mean, there was a very, very wonderfully um, um, grounded man who had a huge, successful business in the shoe industry. And on his desk was written, 
the order of his priorities. God first, family second, work third. Now I would put God and family, and I would include family, everything and everyone that there is as one. And I would put out of that flows your work, understanding that. There's no hierarchical stru structure in my mind with regard to God first, family second, and work third. It's all just one big one thing. The two at the top together, merging, producing the work, you see. The creative process, working together, spirit and soul, producing creation, the sun, if you like, which is the work, and, the, and, and the, the outcome of the work, the outcome of the work. So your job, whatever your job is, ideally speaking, ought to support your work, ought to be enlivening your work, ought to be deepening your work, and in so doing, adding to life, putting more life into life, breathing more life into life, uplifting life, raising up life, engaging and energizing life. That's what our job ought to be doing, and it doesn't matter what the job is. It doesn't matter what the job is, good, bad, or indifferent, as the world would describe it. It doesn't matter. What you do matters not. It's who you are while you are doing it that matters. Who shows up here to do whatever it is I'm engaging in doing? Who shows up here? Is it that amazing, amazing awareness that it is more than me that's showing up here to take care of this job? It is more than me that is engaged in this job so much more than me. That amazing awareness that I am more, as Walt Whitman says, than that which exists between my feet and my hat. I am so much more than that. And it's to be in touch with that, engrossed with that, engaged in that. My work is to recognize the truth of my being, who I am, what I am, and why I am. That's my work. That's my only work. Who am I? I am the amazing aspect, live, living flame of the divine that created me, the source that created me. I am its reflection. I am its mirror. I am its aspect. And as its aspect, I am omni. The omni is within me. The omni is within me, omnipotence, all power, omniscience, all knowledge, and omnipresence. The whole of life and living is within me. That's who I am. That's what I am. And I'm here to discover that, identify with that, and then live from it in the way I think from it, in the way I feel from it, in the way I act out of it. That's my work, and it's yours too. And here's the thing, if I'm engaged in my work, all is well. All is well. No matter what the circumstances are, no matter what the situations are, no matter what the appearances are, all is well. Because I'm engaged in my work and I'm one with it. And as I am, I will walk through the valley of darkness and I will fear no evil. Now, for that to happen, of course, I have to do one thing. My job, my main job in order to do my work is to heal the ego, to heal the ego, to mend it, fix it, and heal it in whatever manner it needs it. Because a fragmented ego keeps me in fear, and fear keeps me in separation, and separation keeps me in pain and suffering. And so, I need to heal that awareness of an ego that thinks in terms of fear, and is always angst and frightened and scared <clears throat> and afraid, the shadowy part of me that's afraid of shadows. And there is no substance to a shadow. None whatsoever, and yet I'm afraid. Remember as a small child, I can remember driving through the country at night as a small child, and I, I'd have the rug wrapped around me because it was winter, and we didn't have heating in the cars. 
uh, unless you were really up front. See, just sitting with my mother, and, and as we passed the shadowy trees and the, in the moonlight and so on, it was a scary kind of thing. Those shadows were scary. And you see, we still remain scared of the shadows in our lives with regard to a frightened ego and all that it conjures up in mind. That's not the truth. That's a whole load of baloney, but yet we live according to it and we respond to it as though it were real. So that's my first job, to heal that, to integrate that, to allow it to be the beautiful thing that it already is and was and is meant to be. An ego in balance, a beautiful personality, a beautiful persona that is supporting my work, assisting my work, honoring my work, reverencing my work, and enabling me to get the job done that I'm here to do. So that's what I have to do, however I have to do it, and you will be inspired with regard to how to go about that if you want to be, and if you call upon that omniscience within you that will guide you, and that will inspire you, and that will speak to you with regard to that. So what am I called to do here today? I'm called here today to make my job my work, and my work my job to have unity and harmony between the two concepts and to allow myself to walk in the marketplace with integrity because I can. People do it all the time and if people do it, I can do it. So here's what I have to know about myself that I can choose this day to be the blessing that I am and I choose this day to be the divine enterprise to be the work of spirit's genius, to be in relationship with my source consciously. I choose this day to be the conscious awareness of the glory of God fully alive by means of me. I choose this day to live according to the way of divine love. I choose this day to be the givingness of life back onto itself and make the difference. I choose this day to be all that I came here to be, the true self of myself. I choose this day to go courageously forward now, knowing that I do not go alone, but I am accompanied by the power and the presence of the infinite being that so desire to know itself by means of me in form. I choose this day to be in the same consciousness of myself that spirit is. I choose this day to know myself as spirit knows me, as that which is whole, as that which is healthy, as that which is well, as that which is prosperous beingness. And I choose Choose this day to remember that to prosper is to confer a blessing upon all life and living, arising out of the understanding and the realization that I am the blessing of life unto itself as I go about the business of living and the business of giving God the glory always and ever in and through and by means of me I choose this day to be the best of myself and I choose this day to respect the self of me, to reverence the self of me, to honor the self of me, to love the self of me, and always to support the self of me by the grace of God flowing in and through and by means of me. I choose this day to be the best life that I can be, the best liver of life that I can be, the best lover of life that I can be. I choose this day to be my great self. So help me, almighty good God itself. That's what I'm choosing for myself this day, and you can choose it for yourself too. Do you want this choice in your life, and are you ready to make it today? Yes. Are you ready to do what it takes to be the best of yourself? Yes. Are you ready this day to be open to the divine inspiration that is going to flow through you to help you to come into communion with the best of yourself? Yes. Do you choose this day the way of unconditioned and unconditional love? Yes.
Is that your final answer? Yes. And so it is.